Purgatory by Dante Alighieri Translated and read by Leon Stevens Canto I Now my small bark of genius hoists sail To ply her course in smoother waters, Leaving in her wake so cruel a sea. And I shall sing of that second realm Where human spirits are purified And made worthy of flight to heaven. But here let dead poetry resurrect, O holy muses, now that I am yours. And here Calliope come fully forth, counterpointing my song with that strain which made the miserable magpies feel such a blow they despaired of pardon. A sweet tincture of oriental sapphire, in its serene demeanor being gathered by the atmosphere clear to the horizon, replenished my eyes with delight when I stepped forth from the dead air which had coarsened mine eyes and lungs. The lovely planet which comforts with love was causing all the east to smile, veiling the fish which lay in her train. I turned to the right hand and set my mind upon the other pole, and saw four stars ne'er seen before but by the first people. Heaven seemed in their faint flames to rejoice. O oh, northern lands now widowed dominions, since you are deprived of their beholding. As my sight left off their contemplation, Turning a little to the other pole up to where the wain was now departed, I saw near me an old man alone, worthy in guise of such reverence that no son oweth his father more. He bore his beard long and silver sabled in manner matching his hair, which in double tresses fell to his breast. The rays of the four holy lumens adorned his face with such splendor I saw him as if the sun were before. Who can ye two be who up the blind river have fled eternal prison? he inquired, shaking those noble locks. Who guided you, or what was your lamp as you rose out of that deep night which ever makes black the hellish hollow? Are the laws of the chasm broken so? Or is heavenly counsel new altered that you come damned unto my crags? Now my leader took firm hold of me, and with words and with hands and with signs made me reverent in knees and brow, then answered him, I came not of my own will. A lady descended from heaven, at whose prayers I aided this man with my company. But being thy will that we more events our estate as it is in very truth, it cannot be mine to fail to comply. He hath not yet seen the final evening, yet by his foolishness it came so near, but little time was left to turn away. Thus, as I said, I was ordered to him to rescue him, and he had no other way than this one which I set out upon. I have shown him all the wicked people, and now intend to show him those spirits who under thy wardship are purified. How I brought him here would be long to tell. A power descends from on high which helps me direct him to see thee and to hear thee. May it please thee welcome his coming. He goes seeking liberty which is so dear as he knoweth who for her forfeits life. Thou knowest. Thy death for her in Utica was not bitter where thou left the vesture which on the great day will be so splendent. For us eternal edicts are not undone, for he is living and Minos binds me not. Yea, I am of the ring where thy Marcia's chaste eyes do pray to thee, O holy breast, that in thy sight thou hold her still as thine. For the love she bears then, bend to our plea. Let us walk through thy seven regions. I shall to her thy bounty impart, and thou deign to be mentioned below. Marcia was so pleasing to my eyes when I was over there, he said thereon. Whatever boon she sought of me, I gave. Now that she dwells beyond the foul river, she cannot move me more, owing to that law which was decreed when I thence came forth. But if, as thou sayest, the Lady of Heaven moves and rules thee, flattery is not warranted. May it quite suffice that by her thou entreats me. Go then, and fail not to bind him round with a smooth rush, and to wash his face so every blemish be thence expunged, for it would not be fitting with eyes dimmed by any mist to go before the first minister who belongs to paradise. Round this little island, adown, adown, there below where it's beaten by the waves, rushes are growing over the soft mud. No other plant that should bear leaves or grow hard can there sustain life for it yields not before the blows. And let your return be not by here. The sun which now riseth will show you the gentlest slope to climb the mountain. 
Thus he disappeared, and I rose up straight, speaking never a word, and drew me back beside my lord and raised to him mine eyes. He began, Follow behind in my steps. Let us turn back, for in that direction this slope declines to its lowest extreme. Dawn overcame the early morning hour which was fleeing before, so from afar I recognized the trembling of the surf. We went along the solitary lowland like a man who returneth to the lost road. So him thinks till he finds it, he goes in vain. When we were come to where the morning dew contends with the sun, being in that place wherein the sea breeze it is scarce dispelled, my master with gentle ease spread out both hands over the new-sprouted grass, whence I, who was apprised of his art, offered him my tear-stained cheeks, whereon he fully brought to light that colour in me which hell had hid. We arrived therewith at the desert strand, which never saw sailing on its waters a man who had the skill to make about. There he bound me as the other enjoined. O oh, wonder, for so as was the humble plant that he chose where he uprooted it, instantly such another was reborn. Canto II Now the sun had reached the horizon, whose meridian circle crosses Jerusalem at its highest point and night which opposite him goes her round was rising from the ganges with the scales which fall from her hands when she overcomes so that the pearl-white and vermilion cheeks of comely aurora there where i was were growing orange in her aging hours we were still alongside that sea like people who are thinking of their road who go in heart and in body stay and behold, as alone at first light Mars shines red through the thick vapours, low in the west above the flat ocean, me likewise appeared, may I see it again, a light coming over the sea so fast, no flight with its motion can compare. When I had from it a little veered my eyes to inquire of my leader, I saw it grown bigger and brighter. Then on its either side to me appeared in white, I knew not what, and underneath, little by little, another emerged. Still my master uttered not a word, the while the first white forms figured wings. Then, when he recognized the boatman, he cried, Bend, bend, make bend thy knees. Behold God's angel, fold thy hands, henceforth shalt see such ministers. Look how he disdains all human means, so he wants no oar, nor other sail than his wings between such distant shores. Look how he's raised them up to heaven, beating the air with eternal feathers that do not molt like mortal hair. Then as the holy bird came toward us, nearer, nearer, he shone more brightly. Thus so close my sight endured him not, but I cast it down. And he came to shore in a modest vessel, so trim and light, the hull drew no water in any part. At the stern the celestial steersman stood. Such he seemed, inscribed with blessedness, and more than a hundred spirits sat within. In exitu Israel de Egipto, they all sang together in a single voice, with all that is written after in that psalm. He made them the sign of the Holy Cross, whereupon they all leapt down to the beach, and he turned back swiftly as he was come. The crowd that remained there appeared alien to the place gazing round like people who assess new things. Everywhere the day was darting swiftly from the sun, who had with elegant darts driven Capricorn from Welkin's centre, when the new-come people raised their brows to us, saying to us, If you know, show us the way to climb the mountain. And Virgil answered, Perhaps you believe that we have experience of this place. We, however, are strangers like yourselves. We came before some while afore ye by another way, so crabbed and choked the climb will us seem henceforth a toy. The souls who had of me perceived by my breathing that I was still alive, ye came in their wonder ashen pale, and as people hurry to hear the news from a messenger bearing the olive branch, and none doth stick at stepping on toes, so each and all of those fortunate souls stared fixedly in my face almost forgetting purification. I saw how one of them pushed forward to embrace me with such great affection that he impelled me to do the same. Ah, those shades empty of all but form! Three times behind him I circled my arms, and as many stepped back with them at my breast. 
My face flushed in wonder, as I believe, so the shade smiled and drew himself back, and I, following him, spurred myself forward. With gentle voice he bade me desist, and I knew who he was, and prayed him halt with me a short while to converse. He replied to me, So as I love thee in mortal body, so I love thee freed, therefore I'll halt. But why goest thou here? Dear Cazella, I am making this journey, I said, to return again where now I am. But how is so much time denied thee? And he to me, No outrage has been done me if he who carries whom and when it please him repeatedly disallowed me this passage, for he makes the will of justice his own. These three months, verily, he hath taken with all good will whoever wished to board. Thus I, who e'en now was turned to the shore where Tiber's waters alter fresh to salt, was gathered in by his tender mercy at that roadstead whither he bends his wing, for in that place whoever falleth not to Acheron doth ever take refuge. And I, if new laws do not deprive thee of memory or use of the loving song that wontedly soothed all my sufferings, therewith may it please thee something comfort my soul, which coming here in my body is so distraught. Amor che nella mente mi ragiona, he commenced thereon so sweetly to sing, still within me its sweetness echoes. My master and I, and all those people who were come with him, appeared so content as if the mind of none heeded aught else. We were all walking spellbound and heedful of his notes, and behold the venerable greybeard crying, Hardy spirit, what's this? What negligence, what sloth is that? Run to the mountain to shed the slough that is the barrier to sight of God. As when pecking at chaff and tares, doves congregate in the pasture without their wonted show of pride, if aught arise which arouses their fear, at once they abandon the forage because now taxed with greater care. Thus I saw that new come crowd of souls leave off the song and scatter toward the bluff, like one who goes, not knowing what he risks, no less hasty was I leaving thence. Canto three. The while that they in hurried flight dispersed over the plain, turned to the mount where to reason pricks us, I held close to my staunch companion, and how without him should I have run? Who would have led me up the mountain? He appeared to me as if gnawed from within, O oh, ennobled conscience, undefiled, how bitterly bitten by the least fault! When his feet had given over haste, which quits of dignity every act, my mind, which was first disquieted, in eagerness enlarged its purpose, and I trained my sight against that tor which toward heaven highest emerges. The sun, which was flaming red behind, was broken before me by the form which made of me the prop of his rays. I turned to look to the side in fear of being abandoned, when I saw only before me the earth darkened, and my comforter, why still mistrustful? He began, turned fully round. Believest me not with thee, and that I am guiding thee? Now it is evening, where lies entombed the body in which I cast a shadow. Naples holds it, and from Brundisium was ta'en. Nay, if before me tis nothing shadowed, wonder no more than if of the heavens one doth not encumber another's ray. The Almighty, who to us doth not grant that his reasons be revealed, to endure torments fire and ice affords like bodies. He is mad who hopes our intellect may comprehend the infinite way which in three persons hath one substance. Humankind be content to know what is, for had you the power everything to see, Mary then need not have lain in labor. And thou hast seen fruitlessly desiring those whose desires should have been quieted, given them eternally for mourning. I speak of Aristoteles and Platon and many others. And here he bent his head and said nothing more and remained discomposed. We meanwhile arrived at the mountain's foot. There we encountered the rock face so sheer. The efforts of our legs had been futile. The most wasted, the most shattered ravine between Le Ricci and Turbia, anent that one's a smooth and open stairway. Who knows at which hand the cliff abates, said my master, stopping in his tracks, that one who goes wingless may ascend. And while he was holding his eyes cast low, and was searching in his mind for the road, and I was looking up along the stone, a crowd of souls appeared at my left who moved their feet in our direction, and seemed not so, so slowly they came. 
Aster, I said, lift up thine eyes, behold these here who will give us counsel if thou canst not have it of thyself. Thereat he looked and with unburdened mien replied, Let's go there, they come leisurely, and thou, gentle son, bolster thy good hope. That company was still so far distant, I mean when we had gone a thousand steps, as a skilled slinger may hurl with his hand, when they all drew back to the hard boulders of the high wall, and stood still and huddled, as one who goes in doubt may stop to stare. O chosen spirits who made good parting, Virgil then commenced to say, By that peace which is, I believe, waiting all of you, tell us where the mountain bendeth lower to facilitate our going upward. For who knows more is more galled wasting time. As sheep depart the shelter of the fold by ones, by twos, by threes, and the rest stand timid, pointing muzzle and eyes earthward. And as the first does, so the others do, bunching behind him whenever he stops, docile and quiet, and they know not why. Thus I saw the forward rank of that fortunate flock moving now to come, modest in mien and with seemly step as those before could see the light broken to my right side on the earth, so my shadow went from me to the cliff. They stood still and drew somewhat back, and all the others close behind, without knowing why, did the same. Before you ask me, I confess to you this is a human body that you see by whom the sunlights parted on the ground. Do you not admire, but be assured that not without power come from heaven doth he endeavour to mount this wall? Thus the master. And those worthy folks said, Go you back, so you proceed before us, waving us on with the backs of their hands. And one of them began, Whosoever thou art going thus, turn to me thine eyes, reflect if thou sometimes saw'st me beyond. I turned me toward him and fast regarded. Blond he was and bonny and had a kind look, but a blow had split one of his brows. When humbly I had disavowed my having ever seen him, he said, Now look and he showed me a wound above on his chest. Then smiling he said, I am Manfred, grandson of the Empress Constance. Wherefore I pray thee, when thou do return, go to my beautiful daughter who begat the sovereigns of Sicily and Aragon, and tell her the truth if it be falsely told. When my body by two mortal cuts was wounded, weeping I surrendered to him who willingly grants pardon. The sins that were mine were unspeakable, but infinite goodness hath such broad arms, she embraceth him who turns back to her. If the pastor of Cosenza, who was sent on the hunt for me by Clement, had then well considered this page of God's word, the bones of my body would still be lying at the head of the bridge near Benevento, under the vigilance of the heavy cairn. Now they are washed by rain and moved by wind outside the kingdom near by the Verde, where he translated them with candles snuffed. By their malediction, eternal love is not so lost that it cannot return, so long as hope retain the bloom of green. It's true that he who dies in rebellion against holy church, though at death repent, is obliged to remain without this bank thirty times the time he hath lived in insolence, if such decree be not tempered by holy prayers. See now if thou canst make me glad, revealing to my good Constance how thou sawst me and this exile. For by those there we hear much speed. 